and welcome to Beadsdia. In today's fabulous tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a bezel around these beautiful abalone shell um, beads and make these fab dragon egg earrings. If there's any Game of Thrones fans out there, I think you'll agree that these are pretty fabulous. For our earring project, we're going to be using the abalone shell beads here. We've got the sterling silver triangle pendants for the earring part, sterling silver ear hooks, size 15 Mayukis in the olive metallic. We have size 11 matte metallic patina iris, and we've got the Mayuki sharp triangles. Tool wise, we'll be needing a pair of pliers, our scissors, and I'll be threading everything onto the eight pound smoke colored fire line. And I've thread onto a 10 millimeter beading needle, and I've cut about a meter and a half of fire line for this project. To start our project, I'm going to be using the size 11 in the Mayuki seed beads. With these, we're gonna create a bezel around this beautiful abalonium bead, and I'm gonna be putting them onto the size 10 beading needle. Now, I've worked out we're gonna need 34 of these beads to go around the abalone shell. So, I know this is a bit tedious, but I am gonna count the 34, because you have to be exact, and I have to have an even number in order for this project to work. So, one, two, three, four, five, Okay, so now I've got my 34 beads on my thread and I'm just gonna pull those along my fire line. So I'm just pulling that through and I'm gonna leave a tail end of thread that we'll tuck back in to our project later on. And now you're gonna take, so this is the tail end of the thread and this is the side that we've just come through with our beading needle. And I'm gonna go back through the beads so all of these beads, I'm gonna go through again with the needle. You can do it in stages or one big line or even one at a time, whichever you do, as long as you get all the beads with the thread going through twice. I'm gonna take this through the first bead again, so I'm beading needle through that one. And then hopefully we should be able to pull that to create our nice neat loop. And this with the 34 beads is gonna go around the abalone shell, like so. You don't need to be pulling this tension really tight at this moment. It will do that naturally as we progress with our stitch. So we're going to be doing a peyote stitch, which is very nice and easy. And as we move, keep going with the project, you'll notice the form actually comes up around the sides to create the bezel. So it gives you the sides that we need naturally on this project. So this is where we are. The tail end coming out of this side of that bead and my beading needle side here. You can sellotape that down if you wish or just hold it with your hand. But what we are gonna do is start our pickup. So we take one of the size 11s onto the beading needle and then we go through. So I'm missing this first bead and I'm going through the second seed bead on my loop. So it creates two beads sat alongside each other and one single one. We pick up another new bead. You miss the next bead and you go through the one after that. Now 
I'm working with my project flat against the mat. This is in order to be able to show you accurately the bead not moving without the beads moving around and my fingers in the way. But if it's more comfortable, you can pick up your project. So you're missing the bead and then you're going through the next one. And you can hold it this way as well. You don't have to religiously stick to what's what I'm showing you, as I say, it's mainly to be able to not have my fingers in the way. So we're going to go around all the circle until you've come back to the tail end with this method. I'll join you in a moment. So I'm joining you again after going all the way around with adding our bead on and I'm just at my last one. So this is our starting tail and this is my beading thread. So I'm picking up one more bead, miss that middle one. And I'm just going to do this very slowly so that I try and explain it as correctly as I can. So I'm going through the next bead as we have been doing all the way around. And you'll notice the thread has now swapped sides. So the thread we're using is here, this one. And we're going to create something called a step up. So I've come out of that seed bead and we're going through The one that's peeked out, our tail end's just sitting there, we don't want to mess with that and we're going to pull this through. So this is my step up, so I've not added anything different there, it's just changed the position of our thread and we're now on this top row rather than being on the original bottom row that we were. And now we're going to fill in these gaps. So we're going to be picking up a bead and going into each of these gaps between the peaked beads we've got. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to create a lifted side, so like a bowl shape that's going to create the bezel around our shell pendant. So it should move, so you want to allow it to do that, try not to force it back to being flat, we don't want that, we want it to move upwards. So. Here's my thread and I'm going to pick up the beads. So picking up the seed bead and just very simply going to the next peaked bead there. The tension of your project will sort of naturally start coming in. Now I'm bringing that together so we're going across to the next one. As you may have noticed, I've picked up my project because I find it quicker and I'm spinning it slightly between my fingers as I move around. So we're just turning that and picking up. Hopefully you're starting to see that movement there that I was talking about, so we're starting to see the edge come up. Might not look particularly pretty at this stage, but believe me, it's going to look fabulous. At this point, I can just stop for a second to show you. So we've got a kind of path. It's a bit wibbly wobbly, but we've got a path sort of forming. So they're sat side by side now rather than flat. And we have our starting point where we've just got the one bead. We don't want that. We want another bead. So we're going to pick up another one and go through like so. So we have the double band of beads going all the way around and as I mentioned 
that is going to be the case, the bezel, around our abalone shell. And what we're going to start doing now is adding a next layer that will come in and pull these sides in to give us this effect here. So we're going to be using now the size 15 in the Miyuki seed beads. As we just did with the peyote, so you're picking up and then missing one and through the next one. And that is going to start to fold in and cover the circle, the surface of the abalone shell. Now I've left that bead in but you can take it out. You don't have to work with the abalone shell inside. You can move it out. Don't be fe feeling that you have to stay with it like so. So you can see the two I've added. Just keep going round. So picking up and moving on. Like that. And next one. Complete all this circle with the same. So we're going to do size 15s in between, like so, all the way around till you've got back to here. So there, I've nearly completed the full circle with the size 15s. I've just got one more to do, so I'm going to go through the next bead. And just as we did on the other line, on the other row of the size 11s, I've come out next to the size 11 here and we want to go up to the next row so we're stepping up again. So if we look at it, it looks like a little crown, all those sticking up and out. And we're going to move across and we're picking up. Now the gap is larger between them so as we now start to pull our project beads will come in and that's going to give you that curved effect as you may notice there so as we pull in that tension as we go all around that's going to be pulling these beads in together and forming the, the kind of bezeled effect over that bead so I'm picking up my next one still on the 15s and just as we did with those seeds we're pulling that project around and adding the beads in. So you're just picking up and then straight over. And you're just going to keep going all the way around. So we'd added the size 15s in between the crown effect and that's given us a more tapered shape. So if I pop that from the back now you can see that's created the bezel around the abalone shell and I'm gonna actually add another row but I'm not gonna go all the way around with this one I'm gonna fill in more of this bottom section but not the top I want to leave that because I, I really love the effect on the abalone shell I don't want to cover it all up but I'm wanting to create a slight moon curve shape across the bottom so in order to do that, I'm just going to be picking up again and going across so through that next size 15 along and then we have a gap here so I'm going to step up And I'm going to fill in that gap. Picking up and going through. I've accidentally added an extra bead onto that one. So if this happens, don't panic too much. You're going to go back up through that bead you just came through and your cord will pop out and 
if you can see I've got two beads on my thread we don't want that so I'm going to go back through one of the beads with my needle and as I pull that on the cord there it just pops off that was just the uh, shell popping out as well because we've not finished that side so just put that back in so we can see where we were so I have correct just one bead now and I'm going to go up and across This is actually going to be the back of my pendant here. So I'm just going to pick one more up on this side. The aim was to create a larger bottom beaded section than the top. So here I've got two rows and here I've got three. And I've come approximately halfway up my shell just going to pop that out so if you can see we've got the thicker band of beads here and now I don't want to carry on adding any more along this top row here I'm going to take this back down so I need to go through the next bead along going to go through the size 11 so my threads coming out of here I want to get back to this bead here so I want my needle to come out of here and I'm going to do the same on this half to make this easier I'm going to go through the size 11s because they've got a larger hole and it's just a lot easier to thread your needle through. So I'm going to work zigzagging my way around these 11s. Keep checking you're not going too far. Right, I need to come two back in order to now nip through the size 15. So I went too far, which I said not to do. So we're going to go back up through these three 15s. And I'm picking up my 15 again now and going through. We need to just do a quick check to, to make sure we're not going too high on the other side either. So that's fine. And I'm just going to place that on my shell. So we can start to see that effect. So it's meant to sit halfway and we want a bigger section here. Yeah, so that's starting to look how I want it. On my other one. So we have matching earrings. So I'm coming out now of that bead and I'm gonna move one more up and then I'm gonna go back down through the same one. So we pick up and across. So I've just checked where I'm up to. So there's a lot of toing and throwing on this section. And now I'm going to come down through the size 11 and parallel to that one. and back out through the three fifteens. Ooh, yeah. Okay, 
again and placing that over to see how that's looking and I'm going to fill one, two, three more in here for that fuller bottom effect on the beads so back through the 15 and the next one along and one more just in between these two So now you can see that this is a deeper area of the size 15s compared to the top where we've just got the two rows which will give me a fuller area on the back of my pendant. At this point we also decide which is going to be the front and the back. Having already done one earring I want them to match. The back of this bead is slightly different so I'm going to make sure that's my front this is the back of my project we've just been working on so I want that to be back and then we're gonna pop that over the top so that's the back of this beading project right so we're coming back now and we're going towards the front of our project so I'm going to find out where my thread's coming out, which is between that 15. So I'm going to take that through the next 15, in fact the next two, as my needle's already started its trip through, and then onto the size 11. So I'm just weaving forward and now if I let go and we flip round we're back to how we sort of started before and we'll be filling in this one with the same effect here. Before I start doing that I'm going to get rid of the tail end that's at the back of our project so that we're not getting tangled up anymore. So to do that take your beading needle off the other thread or have another beading needle if you wish and you're going to put that back on so you're connecting the beading needle and the thread together. So I've got my end on. I'm going to go back through two beads and I'm going to tie this off. So in between the two beads And I'm trying to hook my fire line under so my needle's coming across. I don't know if you can make out there's a small fire line just crossing over the top of my needle there and as I pull up down on the fire line I create a loop which then my beading needle is going to go through and then I'm going to guide that knot down in between the beads. Take that back up and we're doing the same again here. So catch one of the threads going between the beads. Oops! <laughs> Make sure you do your loop first and go back through it. So loop back through with your beading needle knot down and then up through your beads again. I've done two knots there, I'm happy that that's nice and secure and I'm going to take away the thread. Please double check before you cut this thread, it is the one from the tail end and not your actual beading project thread. So now what I'm going to do is start picking up my 15s again. So I'm just going to see that I'm coming out of one of the seed beads that's sat a bit higher and then that's where we're picking up and going across. 
try if you can to leave your uh, shell bead inside now because this edge is going to start coming over as the other side did and if you've not got your shell in there it can be fiddly to try and pop it back in at a later stage. So I've got my shell face forward because this is the front we're working on and I'm going to come through just as we did on the other side. So we're coming around the project, picking up the 15s. So come all the way around until you get to the starter bead there as well. I'm just on the last one on the first row, so I'm gonna go back through our seed bead before we do our step up on this side. Come through that one. There we are. And this is where we have to do the step up. So I'm coming out of the size 11 here and we're going to go up into the size 15. It's important, otherwise, your beads won't sit in the right place. And as I do that, it should bring our circle in somewhat. Feel free to give that a good old pull. And we're going to be adding our 15s again. Straightforwardly and round onto the next ones. Like so. You're picking up and round. etc. So you keep going round and then I'll join you when we're back to the starter point where we had the two here. So what I've done is finish off my 15s going around here and I'm now going to be aiming to put on our lovely triangles to give us the swirl effect around the... Um, so I'm coming towards the bottom of the pendant so it's kind of an oval shape so if that has a bottom and I'm going to take my needle through the beads and I want that to come out next to one of the size 11s so I've gone through two 15s and popping out next to that 11 there and then we can start adding the triangles And we're going to do very similar to how we did our peyote stitch. So you're going across the beads. So from one to the next. And your triangle is going to sit like that. And you pick up your next one. And you're going over again. You do just need to make sure these sit well as we're going round. So they want to be on their bottoms flat against the beads. So this one's going to be a particular awkward one it looks like. So there's a twist there in my thread so I'm just going to have to guide that out that way and pull that thread down in order for that to sit correctly and then we can pick up again. And you're going through. And we're guiding it. Okay, so keep going with that all the way around our project. Joining you again and we've gone all the way around with those beautiful triangle beads and I'm going to flip my project round.
my beading line has come out of that seed bead at the front and I'm now wanting to go behind so we want to take that through the next seed bead if I can so I'm coming out of that side and here's where I'm going to place my step up to connect to our triangle so I'll just bring him to the picture there and we're going to pick up two and three size 15s take them down the thread whoops and we're going to go through the middle of the triangle and then I've just turned this project upside down so I've gone through the loop and I'm going to go back through one of the size 15s and I'm pulling that down towards the seed bead and then we're going to pick up two more size 15s here and we're coming back through the size 11 so we've done a triangle shape as well through our beads pull that through there we go I'm just going to pick that up. I'm going to double secure this, so back up through the three. Oi, naughty thread. Up through the triangle. And you can flip your project around if you wish. So I'm back to the front and then back through those three so look at the back now and I'm going to come down here okay back through my eleven so my thread's coming out the top there and I'm going to add my fancy bits to the side. So on this one we're going to pick up two 15s, one 11, triangle 11 and two 15s. And I'm coming across to the loop on the triangle. So I'm going to take my needle through that. Oh. and then back down so I just spun the project round a bit in my hands there so we're coming back round through the beads and I'm pulling on that thread to bring them into the pendant So what's happened here is I've got a gap between that loop so my thread is pulling through so what I need to do is open that up and tighten it back again. So I'm just going to push my thread back inside because that is not helpful for me and then I'm really securing that back down with my pliers. so that the thread doesn't come out like that and then back through our bead on the bottom and the same on the other side there we go 
I can see there's a gap on this one as well, so I'm just going to tighten that up before I start. So I'm really just wriggling that wire so it connects to the other side so we don't have that same problem. And then we're picking up our beads again. So we're going for two 15s and 11, a triangle, 11 and 15s. We're going to go through our triangle side here. And then back down through our seed beads. So I've come back into the centre one and I'm just going to tie it off and that will be our project complete. So I'm going to take that through a few beads to the side. And the bezel will be finished, so I'm going through the fire line like we did before, making our loop and then pulling our knot tight in between the beads. I'm going to do that twice. So find the loop and then through and down through the two beads. and cut that off with our precision scissors. So that is the bezel done. So we have the two complete bezels for our abalonian shell. And now onto the top of this, really nice and simple, which I'm sure everyone will be rather relieved about. We're just gonna open the top of the ear hooks and attach them. One last thing though, before you do, make sure that when you open it, it does sit the right way. This is going to be on your earlobe, so you want that facing forward. And then you just want to support the neck of your ear hook. Use a pair of flatness pliers to open that up. So the front, I want that to go that way. So there I've got the back, and there's the front of my pendant. And we just want to close that together so there's no gap and that gives you the front of your earring so it'll hang correctly in the ear. Second one. And there you have your earrings finally completed. Well done. Thank you for watching our tutorial today. If you've enjoyed it, remember to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel to see all of our latest designs and inspiration. Until next time, bye bye.